But here we are. Um, NBA All-Star fan voting. De'Aaron Fox wow. has made the list of guards. He's still behind Austin Reeves, which is a hair across JJ's took us. But uh, you, you got De'Aaron Fox that on the list. That bothers me a lot, too. <laughs> but Fox is on the list. 221,068 votes. Uh, no Domas on the list yet. But, Rami, I just – are you telling me – Mind is blown, huh? Are you telling me that because more fans voted – that De'Aaron Fox is now on the list. That's crazy how that works. Is that how it works? That's crazy how that works, isn't it? I, I didn't. And that there are enough Kings fans and enough people in, in no, Sacramento. Don't, don't we live in like the 175th market in the country? <laughs> isn't isn't that where we live? We, we don't. We, it's we wild, don't. man. I, I thought. I this thought. Crazy. Like, I thought. The, I thought Golden One held five thousand people. You know what? Get ready. I'm about to say something, Nick. Get ready for this. Are you ready? I'm trying. I'm trying to get ready. It can still get better. All right. <laughs> I'm going to leave now. Now you're outrageous. No. Seriously. You're, you're, can, hold on. You're, so you're telling me yes. if fans vote even more. Yes. It could get better. If more people vote and more people vote more often. Is that how a vote works? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They, okay. Then not only can Deer and Fox get higher up this list, yes. but hear me out. <laughs> Domas Sabonis could also get voted into the All-Star game. It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot to absorb. I know. It's a lot to take in. I know. Say the market argument, as we brought up last week, is weak. Here, Indiana, Charlotte, Oklahoma City. There's a lot of markets that are smaller or comparable to Sacramento that had players on the list. Okay? So we can scratch that off the list. The Kings don't get enough national love argument. I, look, I, I understand that in years past, because I heard it last year, and I've seen Bill Simmons crap on him all the time before this season. I, I would watch you know, Celtics games, and Brian Scalabrini would be taking shots at the Kings just randomly during Celtics, and not even when they're playing the Kings. He's just a – so I understand. That was absolutely a thing, and you guys and gals should have been mad about that. But as Rami and I have talked about, there has been a turn, and the Kings are actually being talked about in circles nationally on, on good terms, way. in a positive way. Yeah, And so th there has been a turn here, and Simmons has turned and has, has talked this team up. Um, Dan Lebetard, his podcast, talked the Kings up. Kendrick Perkins talked the Kings up. I, I can go on and on and on, honestly. I, I can give you a list of at least five or six more names if you'd like them. Now, I could say Mark Spears, but, of course, we know Spears is a Bay Area guy, so he's a little bit more prone to do that, right? He, he understands better than other people nationally. But guys like Zach Lowe, who are very good and analytic, have given you love. So the whole the Kings aren't getting any pub, the Kings aren't getting any respect, that's not the truth. Not this year. The la you, you have all the arguments the last 15, 16 years. You've got all the arguments, and you should be mad about that. But this season, we're looking at this year, I think a lot of people nationally have actually talked about you positively. And I, I think this is a, a great story. I said it a few weeks ago. If this season continues to go the way it's going, this is the best story in the NBA, team-wise. Mm -hmm. like, the best story. 16-year drought, you know, what they're doing right now, the vibe of this team, the beam, all of that stuff, the beam team, all of those things. Sacramento right now, to me, is the best story in the NBA. And I'm not saying that because I live here and because we talk about this team. It is. It's the, it's the best story in the NBA. This team makes the playoffs. It's the best story in the NBA this season. And the idea that, like you said, the market is too small to vote somebody into the All-Star game is preposterous. And, the, Nick, I did not know that there were conspiracy theories out there amongst Kings fans. Oh, I got one. About all-star voting. Love it. Legitimate. Like, can we not bring, I mean, I, w I'm, I'm, I do want to hear Chris's theory here. But Halliburton is on the list uh -huh. because Kings fans are voting for him. And Fox isn't it, because Pacers fans aren't voting for him. It, there it is. You think so? That's oh, yeah. why. Why aren't 100%. Pacers, well, why aren't Pacers fans voting for Domas? I don't know. Bad mm. blood. See? Flying the ointment, as they say. If that worked the other way. Well, you know, Dave and I had a little back and forth over the weekend, and Dave said, well, he, he believed, and I, I thought this was a little too deep, but he believed that Kings fans were not voting for Kings players because they knew 
that it was impossible to vote somebody in as a starter. And so they were thumbing their nose at AT AT&T and the NBA. I swear to God, it's it's documented on Twitter. What? Yes. (laughs) What? And I I said, I said, that's, that's thinking very deeply. (laughs) It's certainly a theory. There's levels to that theory, man. It's certainly a theory. There's levels to that theory. So I I guess, so I guess from when, when Dave tweeted that to me on Saturday, I guess from Saturday until today, Kings fans were no longer worried about getting caught up in the scheme and being just a pawn. And they decided to start voting. They decided to take part in the system yeah, yeah. in in the rigged election. Or it's just the fact that, yeah. hey, get this. More fans voted. What? Yeah. No, come on. Nick. And I'll say this again because that's a crazy conspiracy theory right there. I had people calling me in, intentionally antagonistic. We're joking around. We're having fun. We're not. We've said this from the beginning. It doesn't mean that you're we're saying you're a bad fan and you're a bad fan base. And you don't root for your better. team and you don't go. I that, did say that's better. on you. I called you out at the time. <laughs> Not gonna defend that. I told you the be better thing is, is hey, and I got I got called. Did out they on respond? It. I was like, Were they better? I came after you that day, Rami. <laughs> <laughs> but they're they've been better. And here here I am. Here I'm I gonna, am getting called out for something you said. I'm gonna go ahead and say keep being better. But uh, uh <laughs> now he's now he's doubling down. Now he's doubling down. He's a habitual line now, stepper. He is. He is. <laughs> but it does it doesn't make you a bad fan. It does. It just means that <laughs> fans were not voting enough. That That's how a vote works. So I'm glad that fans started to vote more because you are a great fan base, because you are there at the Golden One, because you've sat there and watched terrible teams and you continue to root for your team. It, it I, I want the national people that, that follow this game to see that Kings fans are voting and to see that Kings fans are behind their players. Yeah, it's a notch in your belt as Kings fans, to vote your players in as much as it's a notch in the belt of those guys that are going to go and play. Here's what I would say. Occam's razor. If you don't know what Occam's razor is, it is a philosophical tool for shaving off unlikely explanations. So essentially, Occam's razor means when you're faced with competing explanations for these same phenomenon, i.e. fan voting, the simplest is likely the correct one. Hmm. Occam's razor. You'll do better in the fan vote if fans vote. And I'm glad that Kings fans not only are going to games and being great fans, but now some of them that weren't doing it before are voting for De'Aaron Fox, and hopefully more of them start voting for Domas so he gets on the list as well. And I think uh, the Kings and Domas and De'Aaron should be thanking the Cals and Rami show for hourly reminders to vote Kings.